Hey everybody, Dr. Hagmeyer here, and if you're suffering with any kind of chronic health problem, you may have obviously started out with some of the basic dietary changes. Perhaps you've suspected gluten was a contributing problem, and so you started embarking on this gluten-free uh, this gluten-free food journey. And after several months of giving up all your favorite foods, you don't feel better. And, and so what I'm going to share with you today really could be a total game changer. So before you throw in the towel and go back to eating gluten and all those foods that, that obviously are those comfort foods, because you didn't think that they were really creating a, a problem in your body, I want you to know that there's more to going on a gluten-free diet um, than, than just eliminating wheat gluten. There are other foods that could and really should be eliminated, and that's really what we're gonna talk about in today's video. So eliminating wheat and whole grains from your diet really is an excellent step. It's a necessary step for improving neurological health, improving digestive function, improving hormonal problems, and even improving many autoimmune disorders. Um, for people that have gluten sensitivity. But most of the time, it's not going to be enough, especially in individuals who have more complicated health history. Now, one of the foods that can create a huge problem for people um, who have already given up gluten but continue to suffer is another major staple for Americans and people all over the world, and it's called corn, okay? Renaissance physician Paracelsus famously said that the dose makes the poison, meaning that even in small doses, something that we think is, is, is safe can turn out to be toxic. And when it comes to corn, uh, this couldn't be more true. Corn is in everything. You think about it, uh, you know, having, have you consumed anything with high fructose corn syrup in it lately? Have you, uh, you know, have you, have you drank, uh, you know, a soda? Have you uh, consumed any baked goods, any canned goods that may have had high fructose corn syrup? What about your vitamins? You know, do you know what your vitamins are made of? Many uh, vitamins actually are derived from corn, or they use corn as, as fillers. Many medications, okay, will use uh, corn as a binding agent, holding the pill together. Okay, what about that low-fat, low-calorie snack called popcorn? Everybody loves popcorn, right? Have you seen a movie lately? Did you buy some popcorn? And who could forget about chips and salsa, right, or, or tacos, right? So here's the thing. Corn is bad for a number of reasons. Number one is that 90% of corn has undergone massive genetic modification, just like wheat. Second, along with soybeans, it's probably one of the most heavily sprayed pesticide, um, you know, with Roundup insecticides. And I don't know about you, but when it comes to keeping my family healthy, I try to keep things that are genetically modified as far away from my family as possible. And I surely don't want my children consuming anything that really comes from or made with pesticides and insecticides, especially Roundup. Number three the reason why, why corn is bad for us is the law of bioaccumulation, okay? Because everything is using corn today, it literally is accumulating in our body. Everything from the, from the grain-fed cows to the, to the farm-raised fish, you know, the salmon, you know, that are being fed corn in order to fatten them up. All of these, these tissues are accumulating these toxins, you know, these sprayed pesticides in their, in their tissues. And remember what Paracelsus said, he said, the dose makes the poison. And so the last reason why you should eliminate corn is if you need another one, is something called gluten corn cross reactivity. Now, this is a major problem for individuals who are gluten sensitive. And let me just say for the record, people send their test results to my office every single day. Uh, they've been tested for gluten sensitivity. They, I should say they think they were tested for gluten sensitivity, but in fact, they were actually tested for celiac disease. And I want you to realize right now that these are not interchangeable. While it's true that everyone who has celiac disease has gluten sensitivity, not every person who has gluten sensitivity has celiac disease. It's important for you to realize that gluten sensitivity in certain individuals will cause neurological problems. It'll cause systemic inflammation. It'll cause skin con con conditions like psoriasis or eczema. It can also cause heart problems. It can be the foundation for autoimmune disorders. So many of these patients were told that they don't have celiac disease, and so many of them walk out of that doctor's office thinking that they can continue eating gluten. Well, here's the thing I want you to realize, that celiac disease is only one manifestation of gluten sensitivity, whereas gluten sensitivity can show up in over 255 different diseases and disorders, okay? More and more research continues to show that this dietary, um, this dietary food, gluten, and, and these cross-reactive foods are very, very damaging. So the point I'm trying to make here is that just because you were tested for celiac disease and you tested negative, that does not mean that you do not have a gluten sensitivity, all right? So back to corn and gluten, okay? Back in 2012, several researchers discovered that corn cross-reacts with gluten antibodies. 
So let me explain that term to you, this cross-reactivity term that you may not be familiar with. In gluten cross-reactivity, the molecular sequencing, okay, the molecular sequencing of the amino acids found in corn are so similar to the amino acid sequence uh, of the proteins found in gluten that the immune system finds them equally dangerous, okay? And as a result, many of the same responses that your body created when you eat gluten are produced when you eat those corn tortilla chips those tacos, or eat something else that contains corn, okay? So to your immune system, there really is no difference. If you've had a taco and some tortilla chips, or you just had a bagel or some other kind of wheat-based product, again, it's still damaging. Your body still builds up these antibodies, and now these obviously, you know, trigger the immune system to attack a particular tissue or create inflammation. So again, this is why testing is so important, okay? You could be doing a great job of eliminating wheat gluten, but if you're eating corn and some of these other cross-reactive foods, um, you're in big trouble, okay? So what's important to take away from today's video is a couple things. Number one, each and every person has a unique biochemistry. We're all different. That obviously makes sense. There is no one uh, size cookie cutter approach to how we should eat. Um, our diets need to be customized to our body's immune systems. And sometimes we need to just dig a little deeper, okay? Number two is that medications can't help you get well. If you continue to ignore the role certain foods play on your immune system, on your hormone health, on your digestive health, or on your neurological health, you're only going to get sicker as time goes on, okay? Number three, embarking on a gluten-free diet doesn't mean that you can swap out all of your gluten-containing foods for the same foods that now just carry that beautiful green gluten-free label, okay? Just isn't going to happen because, again, that concept and, and that, that understanding that we now have of cross-reactivity. Number four, many healthcare practitioners are giving this advice to their patients and wondering why their patients are still sick, okay? We can't just swap out gluten foods for gluten-containing or gluten-free foods, okay? We have to become educated about really what this means to, to have a gluten sensitivity. Number five, and this is the last point, having successfully worked and consulted with many patients who have a variety of di digestive problems, everything from irritable bowel syndrome, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, inflammatory bowel disorders like Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, you really need to work with someone who understands this. Every month or every year that goes by, year after year, where your health is not being properly managed, you could be inadvertently causing permanent damage and just a lifetime of future health problems and suffering. So if I've just described you, schedule some time for, for us to talk about an action plan that obviously would be the most appropriate for your case. If you haven't been to my website, drhagmar.com, I recommend that you check it out. In the upper right hand corner of my website, simply type in gluten in the search bar. There you'll find videos, you'll find information on gluten, you'll find testing that we use in our office. You'll find many of the diseases that are also associated uh, with gluten that you can read up on. Um, I've also prepared a guide that shows you many of the foods that, that you're eating that really contain hidden sources of gluten. So if you haven't already downloaded this guide titled Hidden Sources of Gluten, you can do that by filling out your name and your email in the form on the side of this page. And finally, this is the most important, if you found this video helpful, please share it, post it on your Facebook page, email it to someone. Friends and family members are literally dying because they don't have this information. Please help me get this information that is so desperately needed out to them, okay? Thanks for taking the time to watch this video, and I wish you the best of luck, and if you have questions, give our office a call. Take care.